doesn't have a tanker truck, I understand that they don't. And uh, I think they should have because uh, I remember some fires that we had over there that it was very important to catch that fire before it, it got too far advanced. And I remember one time that we had a fire over there that uh, our equipment wasn't there, but a couple of our men was over there helping uh, men that were hired by the state to fight this uh, fire. And, and all of a sudden the wind changed and it was blowing toward us. And, and we had to run down through that mountain just about as fast as we could run to keep away from that fire. So uh, I think it's very important for them to have a tanker truck over there. Well, Howard is again. What do we? What can we say to a young person? There, there's always that that tru truism, but but joke that you want to get a kid before he discovers cars and girls. <laughs> we discover them anyway. But, but uh, uh, how do, how do you think? Uh, uh, what can you say to a young person who's trying to figure out what they're doing. Maybe they're about, you know, 13 or 14 or 19. What, any, any advice to them and uh, from what you've learned? How to live their life and what it might be to them to work with the fire company or EMS? Uh, Jim, I think, uh, I don't know whether every young man should uh, put in time with a volunteer fire department, but I would say that I had a wonderful time in the fire department, uh, and I can recall a lot of a lot of the members down there that uh, I think had the same same wonderful time that I did. The, the fellowship that you have with those men—it's it's not like. Uh, I've been in other organizations, but uh, it's it's not the same fellowship. The fire department is something because you depend on one another a little more than you do. And when you go to a meeting like uh, Lions Club or something of this it's sort, more social. Yes, it's social. yes, mm -hmm. you you more or less depend on uh, uh, the fellow that's there with you on that nozzle or helping to do something. I can recall one time that uh, there was a fire out on Road 340 out close to Ripon that uh, another fellow and I had gone to the second floor to fight a fire and we were standing on the step up all about halfway, I guess, and, and after a couple of seconds we were there while the ceiling fell in on, on us and uh, knocked us down the steps. And, and uh, of course, I hurt my back and I guess I was in a veterans hospital at Martinsburg for about 10 days, but I've uh, never had any problems with it since, since then. But, but you, you really depend on one another and, and you look out for one another. Make sure that somebody doesn't do something that uh, uh, he shouldn't do. Uh, I know the far at the uh, fertilizer plant in Ransom, I wasn't at that far, but I understand that the gentleman fell through the floor I think his name was Hoffnagel. Right. And uh, I don't know, uh, somebody somebody wasn't looking out for him to, to warn him, I think, because I don't think he would have been on that floor if somebody would have warned him. It's, it's, it's horrible when something like that happens, and it happens once in a while, but it's, not a, not a good thing. People that go through that, uh, I didn't go through it, but you, you never forget things like that. It yeah. It's like that. It sounds like it, uh, you, you all face not only life, you face life and death together. Yes, right. And you look out for one another. 
I, I, that that thing I, I bring back uh, Roger Raymond, I can never, never forget that, uh, him carrying those uh, young children down those steps. It's just it's something that you, you never get over. And every young, uh, every young man, I would, I would, uh, I would uh, say, get some of that experience. It's good for you.